Guys, you are never going to believe what I'm about to tell you. But seriously, like, you're, you're probably not going to believe this shit. Classic WoW is a game with a shit ton of mysteries and secrets. We know that. Now, some have been revealed back in the day, and some have only been recently discovered, like the hidden laboratory underneath Raven Hill Cemetery. Isn't that right, Crendor? I'm going to show this guy the hidden laboratory on the Two Nerds podcast because he didn't know about it. Yeah, I've never been here. I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah, dude. There are so many secrets in this game and so many Easter eggs, but there are also so many secrets that nobody ever talks about. And today, that's exactly what I want to do. Where does the meat vendor in Orgrimmar get his meat from? How were they able to hide Princess Anduin's gender for so long? Today, let's just talk about five hidden secrets in Classic WoW. Let's get started. Number one, the Crossroads Black Market. Every proud member of the Horde will probably spend a good amount of time in the Barrens during their early levels, but underneath this dry wasteland of pig people and Chuck Norris jokes lies a secret unnoticed by many. Do you guys remember a female orc named Sergra Darkthorn? She's noticeable for being a proud orc woman that gives all the male orcs a run for their money as well as being the one who gives you multiple quests to kill lions, birds, raptors, and all to collect their asses. But there is more to this orc than meets the eye, because she belongs to a group of people that run the black market of the crossroads. They deal with all kinds of illegal goods under the counter, and they let the player do their dirty work for them, and you, you're not even aware of this. I mean, haven't you ever wondered why she needs all those raptor asses? Why she needs those Zephra hooves? The truth is, is that she's a criminal hiding in plain sight. And I think that at some point, she's going to need to meet justice. So come on, Blizzard. We need a continuation of her story. Number two, the lost cats of Darkshore. The cataclysm reshaped the world and buried a lot of mysteries under it. But in Classic WoW, you can visit the ruins of Mathistra in Darkshore, and sometimes, while there, you can find a cat figurine while questing. Now, these figurines can be looted to spawn a ghost saber, which is an animal that hunters can tame, or you can simply slaughter it to loot an item that can spawn a ghost saber for a short amount of time. But why do these cats appear in the first place when you touch a figurine in an old night elven ruin? The truth is a dark one, one that can only be uncovered with the really nasty and unholy powers that is. Dungeons and Dragons Roleplay. That's right. Now, I found this one-of-a-kind copy of the WoW Roleplay core book for D&D 3rd Edition, and this copy had, besides several barbecue stains, some notes from either the creator of the game or the one guy who works at the library. I don't know. But I trust in my book, and here it states, here we go. To please Basturun, the cat companion of Alun, the people of Teldrassil ventured to Mathistra and sacrificed their night sabers to be with their goddess. During this ritual, it is vital to use a cat figurine as a focus to bind the spirit of the cat to this effigy of the goddess. Uh, you see, I told you that's pretty dark. You bet you didn't see that one coming. Number three, the meat vendor. Now, those of you who follow my channel and have been following the channel for a while know that the meat vendor is a hunter's best friend in Classic WoW. Borstan in the drag of Orgrimmar sells you an abundance of meat to feed to your trusty companion. From jerky to mutton chops, hog shanks, and even roasted quail, he has it all. But where does he get his meat from in the first place? Why does this man have so much meat? Give your meat a good old rub. That's it. There are no sheep or, or quail around Duratar or the Barrens. And if there are no such animals around, then what is this meat that you are feeding to your precious pet every day? The truth is, and this might shock all of you, that most of his meat is actually tofu. Just tofu. And you would know it if you ever tried it. But instead... You just let your mage conjure cinnamon rolls for you to eat. Or you just get some food off of like some stupid drop out in the woods. Why don't you try the meat that you're going to feed your Mr. Snuggles first, hmm? 
Why don't you? You should be ashamed of yourself. Now let's move on to the next point, shall we? Number four, the spirits of Skolomance. One of my favorite places in World of Warcraft has always been Skolomance. All this dark ambience and undead themes, it just makes me want to explore it even more and get into the roleplay aspect of things. But one of the many enemies that you will encounter here is the banal spirit. But how can an undead ghost that is stealing your life essence be banal? The literal meaning of banal is, and I quote, so lacking in originality as to be obvious and boring. Now these spirits have this name for a reason, but many people are not aware of it. When a group of players wipes in Skolomance, and any of those players were named either Kevin or Kyle in real life, then the game files will detect their name and twist their player character spirits into banal spirits. Forever lost to the game they love so much and still cursed in real life for having the most uninspired and boring names ever conceived by their parents. Unlike my name, Thomas, which is highly original and exciting and manly. Yes. Number 5. Robo Arm Wrestling in Stormwind In the lifetime of each member of the Alliance, the first entry into Stormwind City is a very grand experience. All those different districts and people, uh, there's really a lot to see and a lot to explore, but there is one detail in the Dwarven District that might look odd to you. The crane constructs in the middle of the district. You ever looked at them? They serve no real purpose and they just kind of hang around. Now, if they were used to unload cargo, then wouldn't it make more sense to have them in the trade district instead? Well, my friends, I have looked deep into the codes of Classic WoW and I found the true purpose of these cranes. During early development, they were planning to do a robo arm wrestling competition tournament thing in Stormwind and two players would duel each other while other people would watch the match and even place bets on the results. Now unfortunately, this minigame never really made it into the final version of World of Warcraft and those two cranes remain as a silent reminder of what could have been, but what is not. So guys, the question is, what other secrets do you know about that are hiding in plain sight? Did I miss any? And what do you think about these five revealing stories? Let me know down in the comment section below. And well, uh, that's pretty much it.